Aladdin Story Part 1 There once lived in one of the large and rich cities of China a tailor named Mustafa He was very poor he could hardly by his he could hardly by his daily labor maintain himself and his family which consisted only of his wife and a son His son who was called Aladdin was a very careless and idle fellow. He was disobedient to his father and the story of Aladdin's mother and would go out early in the morning and stay out all day. Playing in the streets and public places with idle children of his own age. When he was old enough to learn a trade His father took him into his own shop and taught him how to use his needle. But all his father's endeavors to keep him to his work were vain. For no sooner was his back turned than he was gone for that day. Mustafa chastised him, but Aladdin was incorrigible and his father to his great grief was forced to abandon him to his idleness and was so troubled about him that he fell sick and died in a few months aladdin who was now no longer restrained by the fear of a father gave himself entirely over to his idle habits and was never off the streets from his companions This course he followed till he was 15 years old without giving his mind to any useful pursuit or the least reflection on what would become of him as he was one day playing according to custom in the street with his evil associates a stranger passing by stood to observe him this stranger was a sorcerer known as the african magician as he had been but two days arrived from africa his native country the african magician observing in aladdin's countenance something which assured him that he was a fit boy for his purpose inquired his name and history of some of his companions and when he had learned all the desired to know went up to him and took him aside from his comrades said child was not a father called mustafa the tailor yes sir answered the boy but he has been dead a long time at these words the african magician threw his arms about aladdin's neck and kissed him several times with tears in his eyes and said i am your uncle your worthy father was my own brother i knew you at first sight you were so like him then he gave aladdin a handful of small money saying go my son to your mother give my love to her and tell her that i will visit her tomorrow that i may see where my good brother lived so long and ended his days aladdin ran to his mother overjoyed at the money his uncle had given him mother he said have i an uncle no child replied his mother You have no uncle by your father's side or mine. I'm just now coming," said Aladdin, "from a man who says he is my uncle and my father's brother. He cried and kissed me when I told him my father was dead and gave me money, sending his love to you and promising to come and pay you a visit that he may see the house 
my father lived in and died in indeed child replied the mother your father had no brother nor have you an uncle the next day the magician found aladdin playing in another part of the town and embracing him as before put two pieces of gold into his hand and said to him carry this child to your mother tell her that i will come and see her tonight and bid her to get us something for supper but first show me the house where you live aladdin showed the african magician the house and carried the two pieces of gold to his mother who went out and bought provisions and considering she wanted various utensils borrowed them of her neighbors she spent the whole day preparing the supper and at night when it was ready said to her son perhaps the stranger knows not how to find our house go and bring him if you meet with him aladdin was just ready to go when the magician knocked at the door and came in loaded with wine and all sorts of fruits which he brought for a dessert after he had given what he brought into aladdin's hands he saluted his mother and desired her to show him the place where his brother mustafa used to sit on the sofa and when she had done so he fell down and kissed her it several times crying out with tears in his eyes my poor brother how unhappy am i not to have come soon enough to give you one last embrace aladdin's mother desired him to sit down in the same place but he declined no said he i shall not do that but give me leave to sit opposite to it that although i see not the master of my family so dear to me i may at least behold the place where he used to sit when the magician had made the choice of a place and sat down he began to enter into discourse with aladdin's mother my good sister said he do not be surprised that you are never having seen me all the time you have been married to my brother mustafa of happy memory i have been 40 years absent from this country which is my native place as well as my late brothers and during that time have traveled into the indies persia arabia syria and egypt afterward crossed over into africa where i took up my abode at last as it is natural for a man i was desirous to see my native country again and to embrace my dear brother and finding i had strength enough to undertake so long a journey i made the necessary preparations and set out nothing ever afflicted me so much as hearing of my brother's death but god is praised for all things it is a comfort for me to find as it were my brother in a son who has his most remarkable features the african magician perceiving that the window wept at the remembrance of her husband changed the conversation turning toward her son asked him what business do you follow are you of any trade at this question the youth hung down his head and was not a little abashed when his mother answered aladdin aladdin is an idle fellow his father when alive strove all he could to teach him his trade but could not succeed 
since his death, notwithstanding all I can say to him, he does nothing but idle away his time in the streets. As you saw him, without considering, he is no longer a child, and if you do not make him ashamed of it, I despair of his ever coming to any good. For my part, I am resolved one of these days to turn him out of doors and let him provide for himself. After these words, Aladdin's mother burst into tears. The magician said, This is not well. Nephew, you must think of helping yourself and getting your livelihood. There are many sorts of trades. Perhaps you do not like your father's and will prefer another. I will endeavor to help you. If you have no mind to learn any handicraft, I will take a shop for you. Furnish it with all sorts of fine stuff and linens. And then with the money you make of them, you can lay in fresh goods and live in an honorable way. Tell me freely what you think of my proposal. You shall always find me ready to keep my word. This plan suited Aladdin, who hated work. He told the magician he had a greater inclination to that business than to any other, and that he should be much obliged to him for his kindness. Well, then, said the African magician, I will carry you with me tomorrow. Clothe you as handsomely as the best merchants in the city, and afterward we will open a shop as I mentioned. The widow, after his promises of kindness to her son, no longer doubted that the magician was her husband's brother. She thanked him for his good intentions, and after having exhorted Aladdin to render himself worthy of his uncle's favor, served up supper, at which they talked of several indifferent matters, and then the magician took his leave and retired. He came again the next day as he had promised and took Aladdin with him to a merchant, who sold all sorts of clothes for different ages and ranks ready-made, and a variety of fine stuff he prepared, which he paid for. End of Aladdin's Story Part 1